guys, welcome back to High Fun Outdoors. We're doing a, another segment here on high lines. So high lines would typically include your lead cores, your coppers, or in my case here, I use weighted steel over copper. I'll talk about the differences in that and how it works. But uh, definitely a huge asset in the salmon fishing, steelhead fishing, coho, all of the above uh, high lines. You know, running them off planer boards off the side. You can get the big mass planer boards and run your releases off the, as I call them, uh, clothesline setups basically send them out on a clothesline but uh, we run them off of inline planer boards where you collect them connect them directly in line so uh, let's first talk about lead core lead core um, it is a piece of lead inside of a Dacron sheath and uh, the reason why uh, people will call a certain a full core which is a 10 color um, you you segment your reels by the number of uh, colors you have on the reel. So uh, typically, each color of lead core is 30 feet, and each 30 feet of lead core sinks down five feet. So say you have five color, that's 25 feet down. 10 color, 50 feet down. So, and it's good to have multiple rods set up instead of trying to do what some people have done, but I don't recommend doing it. Um, so you got a 10 color, you want to put it out five colors. Okay, put out five colors, clip your planer board on at the five color mark, well then, if you're putting a pinch into that lead, you might be damaging it, you might be hurting that sheath, and that could be a weak point in your line when that board is being pulled out to the side, and that could be a weak spot. So you don't really want to do that. You would rather have different rods for each number of lead core um, set up for that reason. And that's the same as it goes for copper or weighted steel. You don't want to put out so many feet of your line and then clip your board on just because it wouldn't be, it wouldn't run as effectively as you would hope. So. Um, on our setups, we have a 13 color, 10 color, 8, 6, 4, and 2, two colors for early season or late season. Um, this year, our 13 color really shined with uh, plugs on it and spoons. Um, that did well during late season in August. It was really warm, uh, th t water temperatures, and everything was reeled down deep, and uh, that was a really good rod setup for us. Um, so on my other side, I'll talk about over here, is uh, weighted steel. Not too many people are familiar with weighted steel. So if you would look at it in the reel, it almost looks as the same as copper, except for a little darker maybe. Um, weighted steel, in my opinion, uh, is just easier to work with. Um, it has no memory, I should say. So you could pull this all out, make a bundle of it, you'll be able to reel it back in the reel. The copper, it has memory, so it gets tangled up very easily. So you gotta be careful with that when letting it out, take your time, don't bird's nest it, cause that could ruin your day really bad or you'd have to cut the line and your 300 copper turns into a 250 copper and you didn't want that. So, but uh, same thing though, have different segments of steel. We have a 150, 200, 300, and we also run a 400. Uh, that one we give to whoever is our least favorite person on the boat when that rod goes off. So, um, but as steel, as uh, the sink rate on these, uh, for every 100 feet is uh, 20 feet down. So a 200 is 40 feet down, 300, uh, 60 feet, and then the 400 would be 80 feet. And then here the 150 is roughly 30 feet down. Um, tips on running this, you can run plugs, spoons, flasher flies on it, um, everything. The steel is heavy, it doesn't sway back like leg core. So, in my opinion, when running on leg cores, you typically don't want to run flasher flies because they'll be giving more action to the flasher fly or whipping it back and forth and it won't be a concrete position for it. So, leg cores, I would say stick with spoons, plugs, um, just for, in my opinion, for the best action for it for that setup. Um, what I also would say that I use a uh, good rod, the Okuma Classic Pro GLT light core copper rod. Um, the eyes are all stainless steel, so the light core as well as the uh, weighted steel will not damage it. Um, you're going to want a good reel because you're letting a lot of line out all the time. The sand pull a lot of line, so you're going to be peeling drag and screaming line out, in and out, reeling them in all the time. So you want a good reel. Um, a lot of times I buy these reels from uh, Captain Chuck's and I have them upgraded by uh, Tuna Dragmaster uh, upgrades. And uh, it's a little bit more money, but you know what? I haven't had a reel fall on me yet, fail on me yet. Um, I've only had them now for a couple years. We've only been doing this real hardcore for the last two years, but you know, I haven't had any issues with them. So, so far so good. Um, for our big rod setups, so the 13 color, 10 color, 
we use the 55 series uh, from eight color uh, we use a 45 series and then anything below that I do believe we use the 30 size and then on the weighted steel um, the 300 and the 400 we use the 55 series um, 200 and below we use the 45 series and these are as well are the higher gear ratio and it really helps for bringing in your uh, planer boards in at the end of the day or whatnot just because it takes so long to get them in and you don't have to do so many rotations uh, but you got to be careful though you got to let your rod play the drag because um, if you're reeling in fast and there you got a fish on you might rip that hook out of the fish's mouth if you're not careful so make sure your drags are set right take your time no no need to horse them in if you don't need to so now I'm going to show you guys how we hook the planer boards up on these so on all of our high lines we have say uh, our weighted line or uh, the weighted steel leg core whatever we always have a piece of mono in between uh, to put our planer boards on to keep them from sliding down so show you here the planer boards we use we've been using these offshore side planer boards these ones have the tattle flag on them um, they worked well for us what I've changed on those I've outfitted them with a Sam's Pro release so I'll show you how this works but it allows us to uh, release our planer boards and not have to fight them in or a fish will uh, strike, release them, and it'll turn the board sideways for you so you don't have to worry about fighting the board in. So I'll show you how that works. So take your line, wrap it around this plunger type nipple a couple times, hold it in place, click it in, give yourself a little slack. And the big thing is making sure you get behind that pin back there or else you're gonna lose this planer board. And uh, it's happened, so you have to go back and scoop them up. So your planer board will be you know pulling off to the side and you get a fish on it it pulls on it let me just get it to release and then that plate floats back and now you're just fighting the fish so that is that setup I know some guys talk about planer boards you know they're good to leave them on there they are uh, uh, we want to call it a sponge or kind of acting as a snubber in between a rip core or whatever makes it a little a little give for the fish in my opinion you know that's probably is true but we have such a hard time getting these boards around each other sometimes because they pull so hard that it's a pain in the butt um, this is our magnum board same thing sam's pro release and we take these or 18 releases that are normally on the front and put them back here um, unfortunately this year we lost two of these planter boards this year and i was so sick of it and i couldn't figure out how this hard hard clip that's so hard to push in and it has its own pin came undone and we lost two of them this year so if anybody finds them you know call the number they're out there somewhere in lake michigan over by ludington so let me know but what i ended up doing because i was so sick of losing them and i was just wanting to try something new i decided to go out and get myself some ninja boards uh tangle tackle recommended them to me chris from tangle tackle and uh, i will say after you're only getting to use them for one weekend uh they are quick and easy to use granted i can't pop them uh, you have to fight the board in but the way they work is you push this button in, there's a pin that goes inside and gets out of the way. And all you do is uh, you put your line in behind the little plunger there and you drop your line behind that clip, you let go and that's it. And it pulls and pulls hard. They, they pull everything. They probably pull just as hard as these Magnum boards and they're you know, a little bit smaller, close to the same size, but uh, they work, they work good. Just you gotta fight them when you uh, don't have fish on. You gotta work them around the other boards. It's the only downside from that. Besides that, they work great. Uh, for my tips and tactics on planer boards, that is everything. Uh, if you guys have any questions, leave any comments down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I'll leave the links for all these products uh, for the websites we can get them from. I would re recommend getting them from uh, Tangle Tackle's website because they have everything you need. And uh, the people there are just great people. They're so helpful. They help us all the time with everything we need, and they've never steered us wrong. So hope you guys enjoyed this little segment, and you guys good luck. Tight lines.